Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of World Bigfoot Radio, coming to you from the big sky country of western Montana and also from the storm-lashed coastline of the northeast. We once again have Leo joining us for today's guest. Welcome back, Leo. Thanks a lot, buddy. Thanks for having me. Always a pleasure. Uh, you're, like, in between nor'easters right now, so you've got good phone signal and everything. It's a great time to record. It is. We're we're hoping it's not going to get us, but we haven't had very good luck with it lately. Yeah, what you were saying earlier, man, you guys have just been getting bombed here in the last few weeks. It's like one right after the other. Yeah, it's, it was too easy in December and, and January, so we're getting nailed now. Oh, God. Mother Nature's on the pipe. Yeah, you got so many that are scheduled for, for each year, and if you manage to dodge for some months, then they'll just pile up and you get them all at once, huh? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> It was like I was saying earlier, the uh, three blizzard per winter theory. When I used to live in Minnesota, you could pretty much guess there were going to be three every year. So, well, the days of guessing around here are over. We 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 don't know. It just it comes when it wants to. Well, isn't that fun? <laughs> like rolling the dice every time. Oh, let's see, what are we going to get this month? Is it going to be nice all month, or are we going to get nailed by nonstop storms? No way. Well, that's the thing. I got all jazzed up, and I I get out to the to the research area that one time and I'm like, well, it's, it's time. It's, it's warm. There's no snow. It's going to be a mess back there, but one time and it's been, it's been storming ever since. So it suffered from a little bit of cabin, cabin fever, a lot of cabin fever, actually. Yeah. It's actually getting nice here. The snow's off the ground. We actually got up to the Patty Canyon a couple of weeks ago and got some comparison shots taken, which was fun. So we can start actually doing something around here pretty soon, assuming we don't get any uh, late winter blizzards, which, you know, snow in the middle of the summer and <laughs> at this altitude, and does. Um, but generally, we're pretty much past the snow part of the year now, so I'm looking forward to that. Well, we're supposed to be, but somebody lied. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and I'm not happy with it. No. <laughs> Well, about the only good thing you can say about blues is uh, big snowstorms and stuff in the spring is that the temperature is generally warmer, so it melts faster. It does. It goes fast. And that's a nice thing, especially when you're like, okay, I've had enough of the snow on the ground for four months already. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know. And I got a new camera, just a cheap one, but it's new to me. So, it, uh, you know, I'm raring to go, and, and I know that when I, after my first visit in that, you know, all is well. He's obviously survived the winter so i know that all is well and i'm anxious to get back in there but with wet as long as there's snow and the, the ground is this moist I, I i can't get in there the ground is just well, let's, soft let's get uh let's get everybody up to speed now and we left off we were talking about you um researching a family group that was in new brunswick and while you were there you started getting information on this other um ongoing um uh, sort of thing that was happening in Nova Scotia. I'm going to start again. Thing. Yeah, well, what happened was I had a family member call me, and he said it was something that I, he thought that I I might be interested in, and he was describing some of the, the activity that was going on in the property and that they thought they had some sort of injured bear because of the, because of the track that they had found. And I said, okay, stop right there. I said, can you get a picture of the track? And he said, I don't know. And I said, well, either put me in touch with them or tell them to go and take a picture of the track if it's still there. So anyway, uh, to make a long story short, I it was a matter of a couple of weeks, and I was down here to check it out. And uh, what was going on was they were having their – they had their – they burned wood, and they had it split and piled and drying for next season. And they – had it had that pushed over a few times um they had a a large track by the oil barrel that and i mean when if you're not thinking bigfoot and you see a track like that i can see where they got the you know we're a little scared because i think we have an injured bear right i mean because what else is you know if somebody's not thinking about that i mean that's the closest thing that they're gonna you know attribute it to so well yeah and a bear's hind foot looks like you know generally like a bigfoot track how big was the track this was he's he's about uh, roughly just just shy of seventeen inches, I believe. 
So if right. that, hey, I, know, I can see how they were alarmed because a bear with a 17-inch rear foot is a really big bear. Yeah, mm-hmm. and what they were what they were thinking was a cut pad on the on the bottom of the uh, on the bottom of the foot, right? Mm-hmm. So so that's that's what they were thinking, but they couldn't understand the sounds that they were hearing. They couldn't understand the wood pile being pushed over and all that. So without you know trying to do any conclusion jumping, which I do anyway, but I just tell people I don't. <laughs> so I uh, yeah, I got I got down here as fast as I could, checked them out. Uh, Talked to them, really nice couple, um, really, you know, confused couple at the time. And then when I, I started to explain what I thought might be going on, um, they had the Hollywood Sasquatch um, image in their head. They were, you know, they were freaking out, and justifiably so. Because yeah. after hearing some of the vocals myself, uh, I don't blame them. But... Um, but, well, no, before you go on, let's go back to the locals here for a second. What else had you heard from the locals? In that area, uh, not not much. Anything, any information I get from that area comes right from the couple that owns the property where I, where I research at. And, it, again... So everybody there is really tight-lipped, so anything that's like local, are. yeah, you, you have to hear it through one of the locals and we'll talk to you. Yeah. So uh, that that's not a, and back there is not a place where I'm about to go door to door with a case of beer and say you know <laughs> let's sit down and have a talk. Cause, uh, is, is it very rural? What's the area like in general? Oh, we're back in the sticks. We're back in the sticks where where this is going on. Yeah, where I'm living right now, I'm I'm in a village outside of a town. Now where this is going on is we're back in the sticks pretty good. I mean it's flat land, but it's it's well hidden. It's the kind of place that when there's a storm, the power goes out in 10 minutes. Right. So this so, is, like, heavily forested? Oh, yeah, thick. Very thick. And, like, let's say just, you know, random random guesstimation here, how far between houses? Uh, there are houses that are, uh, you know, I mean, five, 600 feet apart, but... Okay. If they are, so a lot of them have bigger, more spread out areas in between. Exactly. I mean, if if those are if those houses are together that close, chances are they're related, they're family, and they wanted to live close together. Other than that, right. you can drive for half or not see another house. Right. So yeah, it's sort of the same thing as it is around here. Unless you're near a populated area, you could be you know driving five ten minutes in between seeing houses anywhere. Mm-hmm. But I mean, there's there's camps back there and cabins and stuff stuff like that. I mean, there's you have the ones that like this couple that live there year round. But for the most part, it's it's camps by the lake and cabins and stuff like that. So it's a uh, it's not a big it's not a big population back there. Right. So it's it's very rural wilderness sort of area, which you know, surprise surprise, something like that would be going on in such an area. Did the, the the nice family that got you uh, involved in this actually have any other things they could tell you that the locals had told them? Uh, other than they also would hear the, the vocals, uh, that was the main thing. Other than that, as far as anything on any other property, not that not that I've been told about anyway. Uh, well, it was pretty much just confining itself to around their property and then but everybody else around would hear it and didn't know what the hell it was, so it was kind of freaking them out too. Yeah, and I mean the the amount of coyote back there is is, uh, is crazy. So, you know, it, they would just probably, for the most part, brush it off as as coyote. But, um, so yeah, they they've heard vocals that they they thought they thought were you know a little bit off, but. Uh, as far as the actual activity, as far as I know right now, unless I hit the jackpot and find out differently, um, it's on this one this one property. Is this one of those property? I hear this a lot, and I'm just going to ask because I'm curious, obviously. Is this one of those properties that's got, like, one side of it bordering onto some titanic forest with no roads or something in it? Because, man, do I hear that over and over again. Well, what you have in this area, you have a dirt road, and off to the right of a series of lakes. And in between those things, you have nothing but thick forest. And when I say thick, I mean 
thick. Not all huge trees, I just mean really thick. Everything is close together, and it's... Uh, it's, oh, it's God, very I know what you're talking. You're talking about like mostly pine forest then. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. what. I, yeah, and that's what I say about the the tracks. They're hard to get the detailed ones that would even be castable if I was were so inclined to do that, which I'm not. But because um, it, the pine needle litter is so yeah, deep, the pine needle like with, the de- with the deadfall back there, it's it's yeah. hard unless there's a scuff or a slide. It's very hard to to get a decent a decent looking track. I mean, I've I've done it, but it over four years I might have. 15, 20 tracks that are even worth, you know, showing to anybody else. Yeah. I've I found ones in conditions like that before, and they're like, you can see them with your naked eye, but they're almost impossible to photograph. And then within a few hours, as soon as the wind blows or it rains or something, they're gone and you can't see it anymore anyway. Well, I mean, so, one, of the, one of the first ones that I, one of the first pictures that I, I brought back, I, I uh, showed my father's wife and she she looked at it and she said, why did you take a picture of the stick? <laughs> she, didn't, she didn't see a track at all. She just saw the stick that I laid inside and broke it off at a, at a one-foot length. <laughs> take a picture of a stick. <laughs> never, never mind. I just thought it was unusual, that's all. It was a, a very interesting stick. It was a very interesting stick. It was about, about a foot long. Yeah, I don't know what it's like for you out there, but here for me it's like, man, I'll find probably a dozen or two dozen, you know, impressions in the ground that I know just by size and shape that a Bigfoot made them for like every one that I find that you can actually get a picture of. And then, you know, probably like one out of that group out of every maybe like five or ten that you can actually get a decent picture of that looks like something. So it's pretty frustrating because like you can walk around and see all this stuff, but unless you're actually like there looking at it, trying to take a picture of it is really tough. You need an actual impression in the ground that's deep enough that you can like highlight with a shadow or something in order to actually photograph it just trying to take a picture from above it doesn't work no it does not it doesn't it doesn't work at all the, the best results that i've had as far as as far as tracks is when like right in the gifting area it's it's like a you've got a dirt deadfall mixture so i get I can get some decent tracks in there as far as de- as far as detail, but when I'm out roaming around the rest of the, the rest of the area, I'm finding them, yes, but to hold a camera over top of it and take a picture, you're not going to see anything. No. Yeah, I know. And then you get the complaints too, where you find one that's like enough of an impression into the ground that you can actually see the track, but you can't see it if you leave the pine needles on it. But if you move the pine needles away from it, then they're all like. Oh, that's fake. Look, there's no pine needles on it. Well, I moved them away so you could actually see the track down the ass. Uh, and that's the thing. I, I've got that with that. I don't know how many tracks now. Well, that looks cleaned out. Well, it is cleaned out, you idiot, so you can see it. Yeah, because otherwise you'd just be looking at a pile of pine needles going, I can't see anything. And then you'd bitch about that. Uh, yeah, it's just... like, you know, these people would complain if you hung them with a brand new rope and it was gold-plated. It's still Absolutely. Bitch. So, anyway... <laughs> So you got you got up there with this nice family. They told you that there was this weird thing going on. He was knocking over their wood pile. What else was he doing around the property? Anything? The the thing that really, I mean, my attention was already grabbed, obviously, or I wouldn't have traveled all the way down to, to check it out. But um, the the thing that convinced me was the track that the first track that I found, and the uh, slapping on the oil barrel, and the greasy uh, handprint that that was running along the side of the house. I said, okay, I know what we're dealing with here, and I've got to convince these people that it's not this big, nasty monster because you'd be dead if it was and yeah. isn't. For some reason, he wanted he wanted to uh, to be acknowledged, and once he was, then he he's pretty much stayed off of off of the uh, the property that the house is the house is on, and stays back further. I mean, there's been there's been uh, tracks in that to the tree line, um, a little bit onto the to the to the back lawn. But other than that, he's pretty well since the gifting started. He's pretty well staying staying back. He hasn't caused any trouble at all. Does he ever try to set up any structures or anything around the house, or does he keep that back in the woods too? No, the the structures, the closest structure to the house would be. Um, I don't know, quarter of a mile maybe, 
back. Yeah, that's a long ways. Yeah. Well, that's good. I mean, he's not trying to say, hey, this is my territory or something and take over their property. He's keeping his own structures for his little territory far enough away from it. That's kind of odd. It's almost like he wants them to know that he's there or something and, you know, like, hey, I'm back here. I won't pester you if you don't pester me. Well, that's the thing. I, I, I got the feeling that when when they moved in, which was only, I mean, they didn't, they weren't the ones that built there, but um, it's not that that old of a old of a house, late late sixties, and then remodeled. So um, I don't know if it was a matter of, hey, I'm here. Um, you, if you see something odd, it's me. Uh, don't bother me, and I won't bother you, kind of thing. But he wanted their attention, and he got it. Hmm. He got it big time. He scared the hell out of them. Yeah, oh, I bet he did. God, I feel sorry for those people. I mean, either, yeah. either option is bad. you got an injured, gigantic bear that's in the 1,500-pound range, or you've got some other thing that's not even supposed to exist wandering around the property. There's no good options there, really. There isn't. <laughs> not at all. But, I mean, uh, when they, they were Hollywood. Like, when you when you mentioned Bigfoot, they, 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 were, they were thinking Hollywood Bigfoot, the big, you know, monsters with the fangs and everything like that. So right. for me to try to you know, tell them that it's not always like that. And, uh, I mean, the pictures that I shared with you from New Brunswick, I had to, uh, I had to show them and I had to show that, you know, it's, that they're not monsters. They're not, you know, they're not, they're not all, you know, tree hugging hippies, but they're not, they're not all vicious monsters. And if you to hurt you, you would have already been hurt. Yeah. But to try to convince someone of that that knows absolutely nothing about it, that it that wasn't easy. I will say that though that the wife became a lot more interested than the husband. The husband was just get in there and take care of this thing for me. I, well, I, his idea of taking care of it and my idea of taking care of it were two different things. Mine didn't involve anything going boom. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, it's always a really bad idea to shoot at him. Mean, that's one of the things you have to get across to him from the get go. Yeah, well, that, that never turns out well. That's uh, any thoughts of that were were erased in 2007. So, um, but I mean, I, I, with this, I didn't know what my what my I still don't know what my end game is because uh, in New Brunswick it was it was to try and have interaction, and I did, and but now that I've got that here. Um, I've had some strange things happen where I wanted to stop and walk away, but I don't. I really don't know what my end game is is here. I don't know how to, to close the book on this one. I think I, th- I think there's a lot more to learn, but I don't know if my health is going to hold out long enough for me to to do it. So I, I really don't know what my end game is here. So I have to learn what I can while I can, I guess. Well, there's that for sure, but you could always like head your bets and train a minion. So at the point where you can't get out in the field anymore, you can have somebody else to do it. Well, see, and in New Brunswick, it was different for me because if I wanted to take somebody in, I could. Now I have to go through the property owners to get that permission, and they're not too thrilled about that idea. They don't want to be known as the Bigfoot people of this county. Right. Yeah, well, I wouldn't, like I said, you know, I would have like a an assistant that I was training and not like a crowd or bringing in multiple people or different people or just one person. Oh, no, it would, it would have to be somebody that, you know, knows reasonably what the hell they're doing. I wouldn't I wouldn't do that with, with somebody else's property like that, but because uh, you don't know what they're going to go in there and end up stirring up. I mean, it's peaceful for me, and aside from the few instances, it's it's been peaceful it's peaceful for me. Doesn't mean it's going to be for everybody if they go in there and start acting foolish. Mm-hmm. So, and I mean, I, to look at him, he's he's an older one. He's thin. He he's a cranky looking dude. So, uh, <laughs> and that's putting it mildly. But uh, yeah, so I I really don't know what his temperament would be if people went in and actually started messing with him. Well, considering what I'm thinking of that he uh, is possibly uh, going on there, I definitely wouldn't recommend bringing any other people in there. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't. Uh, I, the only thing that, that 
really stops me, aside from my partner being on my ass all the time, that this is what you're supposed to do, you can't stop, um, is if I stop going back there altogether, is he going to start up again on the main property? Is he going to start up yeah. again on the house and all that? We, that I don't want that. But, I mean, sooner or later, i got to step away, right? So... Well, it seems like some of them do sort of want some level of interaction with some human for whatever reason. And it's well, generally like not like, you know, they don't want to, like, come out and shake your hand or anything, but for whatever reason, it seems like some of them like that um, sort of, like, really standoffish level of interaction. You know, I mean, like, basically, it sounds like he's alone, individual. Maybe he's just bored. <laughs> it could be that simple. But, uh, yeah, he is definitely, well, you can never say definitely, but, I mean, it's been four years, and I haven't seen any other any other tracks at all that didn't yeah. match his, so I'm, I'm pretty sure he's by himself. And, again, for, uh, you know, for Bigfoot, that's really out of the ordinary. Generally, they always want to be with a group or a troop or anything. You almost never hear about lone individuals unless you're talking about like uh you know youngsters that are so unruly that they got tossed out of the troop that they're in here <laughs> go make your own troop get out and then they'll even try and band together um i just posted an account for somebody that was on my group here in 2015 about getting chased down the backside of mount sentinel what sounds like about three uh three of them teenage gangbangers banded together let's go mess with the human chase them all the way down the mountain um you know so that kind of stuff happens, and then you hear the the uh, rare reports of the old crotchety, grumpy ones. But generally, you know, they're like a deposed alpha or something isn't going to be going hanging out near humans. Um, you, you'd expect them to be further out in the bush somewhere and avoiding everybody. Yeah. Um, so, And especially the size of this one. Again, this is kind of like weird because he's got feet that are almost 17 inches long. But your visual on him is that he's only a little bit over seven feet tall, so it's like he's got big whomping feet for his height. He's it's it's not just the feet. It's um he's thin, but yet uh now I, I could be misjudging because of the length of the hair and that because he does have long hair. Mm -hmm. Um but I mean he everything seems dis disproportionate on him. It's the uh it's the hands, it's and I mean you can see in the picture a, a honker on him. He's got a huge uh -huh. nose. There's a lot of things that are disproportionate on him. So, well, again, we've kind of talked about this before, and you know, my my theory on what you photographed is it might not actually be a Bigfoot, because um, it's similar to a Bigfoot and it acts kind of like a Bigfoot. And from what we've been able to figure out, these things actually are related to Bigfoot in some way. But it also seems to match more precisely exactly what a Scandinavian troll would do, and it looks exactly like a Scandinavian troll. It's got the same face. It's got the same body build. It's a lone critter, you know, and all these legends about trolls and stuff, 90% of the time you're not hearing about packs of trolls. It's a lone troll, and he lives under a bridge, and he extracts uh, tribute from passers-by in order to go over his bridge, and that sort of stuff from the old legends and stuff, and that's all, you know, a lot of their legendary as a troll is a lone critter. He lives out in the woods somewhere. And some of them are, you know, friendly, very few. Uh, most of them don't want to be bothered, and a lot of them are aggressive. So if it was a troll, okay, he comes wandering in from the wilderness. I'm bored. I'm lonely. I haven't got any other trolls to talk to. There's no Bigfoot around here. <laughs> I want to interact with something, you know, and I'm totally guessing here. But I'm going to show you guys some pictures of some really old uh, drawings of what they traditionally think a troll looks like in Scandinavia, and you can compare them to the face of Carl that Leo got a picture of and make your own decision on that one. But uh, I have actually shown the picture of Carl to Crypto Sweden, and she is pretty much convinced it's a troll, and I showed it to a couple other people I know, including an insider, and they also think it's a troll. So, um, wow, dude, maybe you got a picture of a troll. And actually, we have a, kind of a surprise here. One of the people that I contacted concerning this uh, a uh, person who's done a bunch of research on trolls, actually lives over in Scandinavia, Solvig. Solvig has been kind enough to send us a short piece on her two cents worth on this whole troll picture and a little bit of background on trolls from her very extensive knowledge on the subject. So let's hear what she has to say about it. Hi, my name is Solveig Folkerheim. 
I'm a friend of Duke and I live over here in Sweden, Scandinavia. Duke asked me to give my opinion on, on this show's topic, which is trolls. I do research over here into the topic of Bigfoot giants and other so-called cryptids. I also study UFOs, ancient civilization and alternative archaeology. When Duke sent me a picture of a strange creature a while back and wanted my opinion on it, I had to rub my eyes as I couldn't believe what I saw. He then sent me an enhancement of it and I almost fell off my chair. It was a troll. A troll in Nova Scotia. How crazy is that? Almost immediately, my thoughts went in the direction of Vikings in Vinland. Leif Eriksson, the Viking that discovered America way before Columbus in the year around 1000. I remembered the stories about how they encountered beings they called the Skrällings. Skrällingar, as we say here. In the Old Norse Chronicles, the Skrällings were described to be small and ugly, with strange hair, big eyes and broad cheekbones. Leif got away, but later his brother Torvald made a journey back and was killed by them. Could the Skrällings have been these kind of creatures? Trolls? Well, of course we don't know what they were, but still it's strange to see a typical Scandinavian troll, as they are described today, on the American continent. This is how they have been portrayed to look like in our fairy tales and legends. Usually they are described as ugly looking human like things with the clumsy body types. They had a big nose, big ears and a big mouth. A long tail ending in a tuft and with warts all over their faces. As they were described as rich, they would often be portrayed with earrings, necklaces and bracelets made out of gold and silver. That's how they are described in our fairy tales. But if you dig a little deeper, you realize that's not the whole truth at all. I won't go into the background too deep, but I will short shortly mention that in the old days, trolls were, were broad, broad concept and included all kinds of being and even humans, things and creatures that had to do with sorcery and beings not created by God. The concept of troll from all sources describe trolls in many shapes, which makes them sometimes difficult to trace to a solitary type of creature. The common denominator has always been though, that these kind of, of creatures were dangerous and that you, you would be wise to avoid them, even though there are exceptions to that rule in some cases. The trolls have always been regarded as being supernatural creatures with special abilities. Often they are put into the category of nature spirits together with elves, gnomes and little people, among others. They are said to be very old and primal. A lore tells us that they were in the land before we came here and we have so many stories of them. Back in time, they were seen much more frequent than now. As times have changed our com community from an agriculture one into a modern high-tech society, these kind of beings have more and more passed beyond our horizon. What once seems to have been mostly creature of flesh and blood is today mostly seen existing as etherical beings and mostly by people who are sensitive to their presence. It has always been said of these beings that they have the ability to walk between words, sometimes in our dimension and sometimes in another. It's very rare today to find reports from people encountering them as real flesh and blood creatures, but sometimes it happens. In some of those cases, the being seems just as surprised as a human by the encounter, as if they were shocked by our presence 
and that we were able to see them. The Scandinavian troll is mostly being described as being of two kinds. One is the mountain troll and the other is the forest troll. Most stories involve the mountain troll. They were, si they were said to reside inside the mountain. They had their own troll society there. They had their own culture and were raising their own cattle, mostly cows and goats. As a human, you really had to be careful and on guard as the trolls were known for kidnapping people and taking them as prisoners in their mountain homes. That was called to be mountain taken, bergtagen. Both males and females were running the risk of being taken by the trolls. Often they were never returned, but gone forever. Some managed to escape from the trolls, but these poor people were destroyed mentally after the incident of being living with these beings, where they had been forced to work hard with cleaning, washing and cooking for them. It was also a common, common thing for trolls to snatch newborn babies from their mothers and exchange them with their own ugly looking troll babies. The troll baby was described as having a big head and a body that never grew. In order to protect the human baby from being exchanged with the troll changeling, it was a common thing to place objects made of steel in the bed with it. Um, other protective objects were scissors, onions and saliva. This was very important to do until the baby was baptized. After that, the risk was lower for these things to happen. In addition to the ability of walk between dimensions, the trolls had other supernatural ones. They could shapeshift into an animal or into a piece of timber. They were also known for having hypnotic abilities. It was said that when you came in the presence of them, you lost the sense of time and space. They had their own very special way of speaking, which is described as being very poetic with rhymes and euphorisms. They were known for hating everything Christian, from Christian crosses, that also worked as a protection from them, to the sound of church, church bells. Some say the very fact that our region was Christianized was the reason the troll packed up and left this area, which in itself is not true, as people are still encountering some of them. Not as many as before, but still some reports are out there. Whatever happen, they may be showing up here in huge numbers again someday, if we are to believe what is written in Völuspa, the best known poem of the ancient poetic Edda, which tells us the story of the creation of Earth, as well as its coming end. It may be just the case. In the poetic Edda, the Völva, who was a female shaman, addresses Odin in what will happen at Ragnarök. Among everything that will happen, she tells him that the mountains will break to pieces and the trolls will be coming out from them right before the sky will fall down. Well, that doesn't sound like th something you want to experience for sure. So hope she's wrong. Well, that was all from me. Thank you, Duke, for letting me tell you a little about the Scandinavian trolls. Bye bye. Well, thanks so much for adding the conversation, Solvig, and I really appreciate that you were willing to do that. All you folks out there, if you're interested in what she's up to, and, and she is covering the subject of Bigfoot and trolls and giants over in Scandinavia. Uh, you can go to Crypto Sweden on YouTube, and you can find her videos there. Well, that's the thing. That's, it's hard for me to wrap my head around that. I don't, like, as, when we were talking before, like I said, you're going to have to inform me on this one because <laughs> I don't, I know Bigfoot. I don't know trolls. Mm -hmm. If if that if it turns out that's what he is, then that's all well and good. He's a hairy giant. That's my thing. But yep. to, to, to me, the word troll is... You know, like what, what 
we talked about before, and that was the little guy with the big nose and the pointy ears and all that. But I mean, I, as far as the actual legends, I I know nothing about it. I was kind of I was never into a cryptid type thing. I was kind of forced into it. So I have absolutely to me, he's a Sasquatch because that's what I know. Right. So when when the whole troll thing came out, it was well, you know, I, I don't know. I I just don't I don't know. He's a hairy giant. We <laughs> don't know me. either. We no. don't know either. But it, so much of the description of him, the picture of him, his behavior, everything seems to match up with the old accounts of what trolls are supposed to be like. And the uh, person that I'm referencing is uh, Crypto Sweden. Solvig Fokerheim, and she's been doing a bunch of research on that. She lives over in Sweden, and uh, she can actually read the old languages, and so it's great because you can look at those old books and translate them into modern Swedish, da 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 da. And you know, a lot of it's folklorish and vague, and it's hard to figure out what they're talking about sometimes. But she has put together that they're basically talking about three different things. They got the forest people, which seems to be exactly what we think of when we, we say Bigfoot, and there are actual Bigfoot researchers over in Sweden and Norway right now that are finding big, you know, structures and tracks and the same things we find over here in North America. And they also have legends about the giants, and they also have legends about the trolls. And apparently these are three different things that they're talking about because the descriptions don't match up. And one thing that they bring up a lot about trolls is that trolls have a short tail. And you haven't seen Carl enough to know if he has a tail or not, but that's something to look for. Um, but then again, the, um, the uh, reports that come in from Alaska – of troll-like creatures out there, and we're talking, you know, 15 to 20 feet tall. They rarely get spotted. Um, they've got the lower tusks on them, just like the descriptions of trolls and stuff generally have for the bigger ones, especially. Mm-hmm. And uh, but they're never, um, there's never any reports of them having a tail or anything. So I'm not sure that like having a tail is an absolute prerequisite to being a troll, and it might be something that they just added in mythologically speaking because they wanted to delineate the this thing was a lot less like a human than the forest people or the giants were, who essentially looked like humans whether they had hair or not, and it looked more like an animal, and you know, hence the tail. But who knows about that? I mean, we're just guessing. We're even guessing that, uh, that, this, that, that this could actually be a troll. But another thing that points at it is location. Location, location, location. How far from the North Pole is it? Well, it's the same distance from the North Pole as Scandinavia, dude. So it may be on the wrong continent, but it's kind of in the right place. You're going to have the same sort of food sources and the same sort of forest and stuff there as what you've got over in Scandinavia. Yeah, I mean, as far as as far as the tail, um, when he took off that day, it uh, with the length of of hair, which is a, a, you know quite a bit longer than what I've seen in the past. Mm-hmm. Um, if he does have a tail, it would be a small one, mm-hmm. but. Um, like I said, up until we started talking, uh, there was comments here and there about that's not a Sasquatch, that's that's a that's a troll. And well, yeah, I, to give you guys some more background on this, I've been bugging Leo, pestering him, and trying to track him down for almost a year now because he saw this thing, he posted the picture. I saw the picture right when he posted it, and went, "Oh my God, somebody got a picture of a troll." And then apparently the the situation was. Uh, pretty stressful and you sort of dropped off the planet for about six months and got real hard to get a hold of <laughs> and so I'm really glad that I finally got you on here to talk about this but you want to tell everybody about that that part of it and then we'll sort of go back to the other stuff that led up to it as to why I disappeared yeah well it was just a matter of I ended up uh, a relationship ended another one started I ended up having to make a, a decision and like an idiot uh, I decided I'm going to give the city thing a try, try to put all this stuff behind me, and and uh, I get and step away. And I did need a break. That was there had been some odd things happen, and then all of a sudden I do finally get the picture and everything. So I thought, okay, well I got the picture. I'm satisfied. I saw another one. I'm satisfied. And again, it doesn't work like that. You come uh-huh. back. You come back every damn time. So, yep. uh, so yeah, it was just a matter of, of moving away. I, I did need a break. I needed to heal up some. Um, I did need a break, and uh, it turned out that it was a mistake. And 
that they're you know uh, they're going to have to be wheeling me out of the out of the woods cuz that's just <laughs> yeah i can't live in the city either i mean i'm i'm like in a small town right now population 75,000 that's as big as i can stand uh, any bigger than that no and i don't even want to be close to it no it's it's not my thing i've tried it a few times and i can say that i i've been on some adventures but no i i the city i'm not a city boy i'm a country boy that's i was born on a mountain and it uh that's that's the way it's always going to be. It's in my blood. Right on. Now yeah, that's same thing with me. Grew up out in the sticks. Got used to running around the woods all the time when I was a kid. I, I like being out in the out in the woods. You know, I'm like one mile from two million acre forest, so <laughs> <laughs> works for me. Uh, so when you, when you first got there and you started investigating him, um, kind of walk us through what happened then. Uh, chronologically, from what, from when you first got there and started uh, ex- explaining to them what it was likely to be, and then started doing the investigation. How often were you there, and what kind of stuff? Uh, was happening? At first, it was it was uh, when I could, which was sporadic, uh, with moving with you know the move down here and everything. But um, <laughs> but uh, it became more often and if and especially if they like once I was down here fully moved down and everything it uh, it picked up a lot and especially if they if something happened on the property if something happened on the property I made it a point to get there as fast as possible because when I tell you that these people were freaked out and we were having a hard time dealing with this I I can't stress that enough so yeah, I, I I did as much as I could to get the whole monster thing out of their mind so I was I was it was often, but not as often as it as it ended up being in the last year. So um, there was no there was no real pattern to it. It was basically when I could get off work and get back there, unless something happened on the main property. So, um, but as time went on, it would uh, it picked up, and once once the gifts were taken, the tracks were there. The, the the arches started showing up, the asterisks started showing up, and stuff like that. That's when I I really picked up on on uh, the amount of time I spent back there. So how often were you up there, about? Um, and during the week, I would try to get back at least a couple evenings to do the do some gifting, and uh, I liked my early morning ones because I could get up. You know, four thirty, five o'clock, and be down there. Still be back home in, in time for work. So we're we're now talking a few years into it. We're talking uh, probably probably the same pattern. I usually follow three to four days a week and weekends. That's pretty regular. You're up there quite a bit. Yeah. When you say gifting, what sort of stuff are you bringing them? Same thing. I never I never went. I've never strayed from from what worked the first time, and that was apples and pears. Because, mm-hmm. again, it's something native to the area, so I'm, I'm, my conscience don't, but doesn't bother me at all with that. You know, I, I always say that, too. If you're going to feed them something, that you know, which I don't advocate, but if you are going to feed them something, at least feed them something that's, like, local to the environment or that isn't some weird processed GMO thing. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm, I'm completely against... Uh, against the, you know all the junk and everything like that, but if if a person is going to gift, make sure it is something from that area, and and because uh, I mean that's just the responsible thing to do. Yeah, and this is you know again what we're what we're specifically referencing here is like don't be giving them chocolate bars and stuff like that. <laughs> My God, they don't have a dentist. Don't get them addicted to sugar. You really want a Bigfoot with a sugar rush running around? No. Don't do I don't that. know. I don't know about you, but but after you know chowing down on chocolate and olives and all this other stuff, their blood sugar is going to spike and then it's going to drop. They are big, ugly dudes, and I don't want to see them running around with low blood sugar because they're going to be cranky. <laughs> so for if, exactly. there's no, if there's no other reason, don't do it just just for fear. Fear alone should be enough to stop you from doing it. Don't do that stuff. It's stupid. Yeah. No kidding. Danger, Will Robinson. Danger. Yep. So, um, how how long was it before you actually got to take a look at them? Before you let you see them? 
this this the past October was the first time the picture was was the first time actually having a full visual of him. Wow. When I when I got the picture was that was the time. So it'd be before it'd be, that you'd been like over there for four years then. For four years, and there was flashes here and flashes there, and movement here and and footsteps there and stuff like that. But the day that I got the picture was actually my first full body view. Mm-hmm. I wish you would have gotten the whole body in the picture. Although I got to say the face is friggin' spectacular. Congratulations, well done. Um, <laughs> it's like one of the best. You have to thank him for that because that was that was that, that I was ready to leave. I was within five minutes of leaving. So I had called it a day, or a night, I should say, um, and I, I was ready to leave. It just happened that I said, well, screw it, I'll take one more, you know, stroll around and and uh, see what's going on. Because, I mean, you know when you're out there and you get that feeling that you're being watched? Oh, yeah. And, you you know, you're wandering around, you're scanning around, and you're not, it's like, well, no, I'm not feeling, I'm not I'm not being watched by anything. I'm just feeling this because, you know, they're in the area or whatever. Well, in this 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 time, it was again just dumb luck. I was being watched. So, um, I kind of just behind where where the gifting stump is, back and to the left is where that root ball was. And um I think back to the old Edmonton story. So, um you know, I got to have a look at the uh, over at the root ball, and I actually looked away for a second, and then looked back. As I looked away, my brain says, you know, told me, wait a minute, there's something in the middle of that that wasn't there. Uh-huh. And that's when I got it, and just kind of slowly pulled out the cell, started clicking. I won't say what my brain told me to say, but it was uh, it involved a lot of cussing. Like, yeah, uh, I would just have to delete that part. So thank yeah. you. Yeah, well, it was taken. <laughs> my brain was saying. Yeah, so no I, kidding. How they how they were going to turn out, I didn't know. But I mean, as far as I was very very happy with how clear it was and everything. The only one that I was really disappointed with was the one as he walked off, and I kept clicking. And it just turned out to be a picture with swirls and a blurry mess with a black thing in it. And I'm picky about what I put out there, and it just would have it, it would have been nothing but a, a black spot in a in a blurred mess with him him walking away and me trying to trip over a bunch of logs that are laid down. <laughs> A la Roger Patterson and the Patterson Gimlin <laughs> film. <laughs> it's walking well, actually, the way. Quick, let me run and stumble over everything in the way, trying to get it. Oh, I got to fall down too. Ah, okay, now I'm up. I'll stabilize. Here's here's your thirty seconds. Actually, good footage. And that's just how friggin' easy it is to get pictures of them. So I'm not blaming them. <laughs> no, I mean it's it is not people. Like I said before, someone actually told me when I said that I was going out. To, uh, I was heading out to go researching that day. Okay, but if you can get a picture, don't shake. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck with that. Unless you I'm got a drone going, taking the picture, how are you going to do that? I'm not in there. You know, I'm not going to the pet shop to take pictures of puppies. Yeah, it's a little <laughs> bit different. You're going to shake. Not everything's going to be ideal. They're not going to stand there and pose for you. <laughs> yeah, you're lucky if you can get one peeking around a tree at you and go, see that little watch coming around the side of the tree that's part of his head and his eye no 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 that's a blob squad but i mean he uh he he was there long enough i've got with him just there uh alone i've got five shots of his head uh the two that i did release were probably the you know close to the better of them there's there's only one that there's one that uh only myself and Nancy have seen, but uh, it's yeah, yeah, it doesn't work that way. You, you take what you can get, and I was damn lucky to get something that that clear. Because yeah. even at the best of times in New Brunswick, even with Littlefoot and even with the whole family, they're decent, but they are not that quality. No. 
Yeah, I agree. This is really good quality. And feel encouraged to send along as many of those pics as you would be willing to share with everyone because I'm sure everyone is just like right now going, oh, God, I want to see this. Well, there's a there's a ton of pictures of the of the area, the tracks. Uh, what I what I got that morning, and um, you know, basically just of the area and and of my findings. But it, it, that's that's the one thing that is you know, other than the concern about the homeowners and the concern about him himself being you know ill and stuff like that, which he may not be. Just you could be right. He could be something different. But to me, he looks smaller than what he should, and he doesn't. He just doesn't look right for a Sasquatch. So, right but again, uh, the the overly large foot for the overly short height. Mm-hmm. He hasn't got the super wide, uh, massive, bulky build. He's he's kind of like thin and emaciated. Overly large hands. Overly large feet. I mean, that's a description of a troll, dude. <laughs> that's what they're supposed to look like. Yeah, and I mean, with what you've shared with me, yeah, it actually is. It's just hard for my brain to accept because I'm a Bigfoot guy. I Other cryptids, I don't know, and honestly, I don't care because I'm yeah. a Bigfoot guy. But yeah. when someone shows me evidence that points it to being something else, I'm open-minded enough to say, okay, maybe it isn't. Yeah, I'm super excited, man. Either you've got a really oddball Bigfoot that's fairly comfortable with you being in the area that he's in, which is cool, or you've got a troll. Either one is really cool. <laughs> so there's well, the way I'm looking at it. I can see. The way I'm looking at it is, is, okay, I can justify this because he's a giant and he's hair covered. So mm-hmm. yep. whatever, whatever he is, I'm still doing what I was doing before. If he turns out to be a troll, well, okay, now I'm the Bigfoot troll guy. <laughs> uh, I'm the guy that, that first discovered the trolls in North America. Here we go. <laughs> that is cool. No, I was just so stunned by the picture, and that you know, his first his first thing I saw it, I went, "That's a troll. Where the hell did this come from? Where? Who's taking this picture? Is this over in Europe somewhere?" And, nope. Well, I say, uh, you know Todd Holiday. I would assume. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, he was the first one that that PM'd me and said, "Man, you got to listen to me. You got to listen to me." I was like, "All right, man, go ahead." I thought he was going to tell me one of his herbal remedies or something like that. He said, You've got a picture of a troll, and he said, "Wait, wait, wait! You've got a picture of a troll." And again, I'm thinking, you know, these little four foot tall things in fairy tales and stuff like that. But it's a uh, I don't know. I don't know what he is. Um, um, I've, I've gone <laughs> yeah, I know Todd. I've been out uh, Bigfooting with Todd before. As a matter of fact, we were up on Blue Mountain here a few miles away and found a big old pile of Bigfoot doo-doo. Um, so, yeah. You know. Did he make any medicine out of it? Because Todd is a good dude. and <laughs> he, has, he has a cure for everything. Yeah, he pretty much does. He's Mr. Herbal Remedy. He's he's one of those hermit guys. No, uh, he was just pretty stunned by it, too, because I had never found that before. And he's been all over the woods and seen all sorts of animals, too. And he also couldn't ID it. And I went, well, you know, I know what this looks like. <laughs> I'm just like, you know, are you sure you don't know of any other animals? And you're like, no, you know, and between the two of us, we've seen pretty much everything in North America. So it's like, uh, well. It looks like giant human doo doo, except way too big for any human to do that much. So, so yeah, that was um, that. W- it t- it did take a long time. It took, like I said, it it was it was four years before I got the full the full body view. And I mean, to to say that I had even seen them before that, I can't say that for sure. I've seen mm-hmm. dark shadows, found all the other evidence, and and seen dark, dark shadows. But to say that I've actually seen him, I think I probably have. But this was the time where I got the full body, the full body, you know, the view of the full body. So it uh, it took a long time, but I got it. It was worth it, and it's enough to make me want to go back. Because now, because I didn't get the full body uh, that I can share, that's my mission for this season. So we um, we shall see. If it's going to take another four years, he can keep it to himself. I'm not interested. <laughs> That's what I say now. Oh, uh, just be patient, man. You know, he let you see him get take a picture of him once already. And, uh, it sounds like he's he's really really mellow. He doesn't sound like he's aggressive at all. It doesn't sound like he's really trying to lure you in or anything. 
I'm sure he's enjoying the fact that you're feeding him fresh fruit every so often because he probably doesn't get much of that. So, well, I think given with the with the structures and and that that are left right after I gift, then uh, it's not a it's definitely a, a friendly interaction. But the problem was is just a few weeks before that, um, I learned what infrasound was. Uh oh. <laughs> But I don't think it was aimed at me. I mean, I thought it was at first. I came home. I got on the on the computer to Nancy, and I said, "Screw it, I'm done." And she said, well, "What now?" And uh, I mean, I was all jazzed up when I first got home, full of adrenaline, and I was all jazzed up. But then I, I ended up sick for three days afterward, all because of a vocal. Now, mm-hmm. but I don't think I, looking back, I don't think that vocal was aimed at me. I think it was aimed at the coyotes to get them to shut the hell up and back off. <laughs> and it worked because they went dead silent and we I never heard anything else for the rest of the night and into that morning. You know, that's another weird thing too. Generally where you got Bigfoot active, you don't have a whole lot of coyotes because they seem to eat them. I actually heard one out here trying to call in some coyotes and he was doing a pretty bad coyote call and I don't think they were falling for it. But well, I mean, uh, yeah. I some other people that have really... reported that too or having Bigfoot doing fake coyote calls and the coyotes will call back to them and challenge them. Mm-hmm. And then you hear the coyotes going over to where the other one that called them from was, and then you hear a yip, and then there's no more calls. Well, I mean, there was a, a game cam set back up there for for deer, and that had been there for, I don't know, it was a few years. And it never it never got anything but coyote and deer. So <laughs> it, uh, but uh, no, it was uh, the sound that, that I got that night after everything else that had gone on and everything, I came home just pumped. I was excited as hell. And then the sickness set in, and I said, whatever happened last night was wrong, and I'm not I'm not going any further down the rabbit hole. I said, it, it, New Brunswick was one thing, but whatever this is back there, I'm not going back. If this kind of stuff that I don't even, you know, I don't even believe in is happening, I'm done. So when you got when you heard this vocal, did you get a recording of it? No, I, I'm not. I'm not one to take in a whole lot of equipment. I'll take in a cell phone with a camera, and just recently bought a camera. Other than that, I don't take a lot of equipment in. I take a measuring tape, uh, my own food, some apples, pears, uh, just my regular, just my regular gear. I don't. Uh, I didn't. I didn't have anything. To even record with other than the cell but i mean it, by the time that had happened it was it was too late which yeah. is what i what why i'm a little better prepared this this season so we'll see what happens well what kind of vocal was it can you describe it it wasn't like a high pitch it wasn't like the high pitched um, scream that i had heard before but it wasn't a, it wasn't the deep it wasn't the deep growl like the the gutter roll growl either it was somewhere right in between and it shut everything up everything went dead silent so it would have been so it wasn't like one of their uh, like t-rex roars or something either no it wasn't a, it wasn't a it wasn't it wasn't deep but yet at the same time it wasn't high pitched it was right in right middle ground it was just plenty it was really loud but um, it uh, it wasn't real real deep so um and that's that's one of the things that that is going to stick with me uh, for a long time too. Is is uh, I'll start to drift off at night sometimes, and I'll I'll hear it again. And it's not I've heard a, a, the high pitched scream. I I caught that in New Brunswick when I had taken someone in that apparently they didn't want there. Um, I've heard the deep the deep howls, the deep uh, the deep vocals that way. And this again, it was somewhere in the middle. It wasn't. It wasn't really either. It, was, it didn't go to either extreme. It was. It was right, right dead center. Huh. Well, this wasn't when you uh, when you got the picture of him, was it? Uh, this was a few. This would have been a week or two before before the picture that I got that I got sick. So. Okay. Yeah, it took me a while to to get better from that. Well, three days to get better from that. And another week or so to get that to actually get the balls to go back in, because yeah. I was sure I was done. I, this, you know, the zapping stuff isn't—it's not my thing. 
And when it became my thing, then I, I thought, no, I'm too far down the rabbit hole, and I don't want to be there, and I'm I'm done. I've I've been very fortunate to see more than most, and I'm fine with calling it a day. Yeah. But I'm not. <laughs> that's always yeah. the problem. I never am. Uh, that's that's the way it is, you know. Once you get interested in this sort of thing and you start actually seeing them and getting evidence and everything, it's pretty hard to just walk away from it. Yeah, I, I had no I had no idea that crack could actually be seven to eight feet tall and covered with hair. <laughs> <laughs> that's basically what it is. When you do this, it's addictive, very addictive. <laughs> yep, yeah, it's it's you know what can I say? It's fascinating. There's these weird things running around the woods that aren't supposed to be there. I mean, how much more fun of a mystery could you have to be involved in that? So pretty hard to walk away from it and you know i can see for somebody like me which you seem to be a person like me where you don't really like the hustle bustle with a big city or anything you know i can uh i can see how the moving to the city thing didn't work out for you because uh, i've lived in big cities before too for extended periods and i never liked it didn't matter what city i was in no it, it's i can't do it it's uh it's strange that you can be comfortable in the woods with with these kind of things, but yet the living in the in the concrete world is too much. No, yep. it's way too much. Yeah, generally for me, I you know I go out and do some research, and if they're around or something, they hear a vocal or they chuck a rock at you or some make some tree snaps or something like that. At the time, I'm, like, focusing my attention on making sure that if I see something, I'm going to take a picture of it and, you know, documenting anything else that I'm finding. And then it's, like, after the fact, generally, that I start getting freaked out about it. And you get the big adrenaline rush, and then you're like, wow, that was fun. i got to go do that again, you know. And, oh, look at the pictures I got. These are cool and everything like that. It's, you know, some of these times when you're, like, in your tent and all of a sudden one comes over and starts, like, violently shaking your tent back and forth or something, that's when you're going, like, uh, do I really want to do this anymore? <laughs> this part isn't very fun. I'm currently scared shitless here. <laughs> and that people it, people think that that goes away. That it does not go away. You don't. Mm-hmm. You know it. It becomes a part of your life. Yes, but fear never. That fear never goes away. It's. Mm-hmm. It's. It would be different if it was something that you saw every day you went to work and sat beside one every day that that would be different but you don't and uh when you're when you are out there alone and and you're doing an all-nighter or even a you know for a full weekend whatever and you hear something outside the tent you hear a grunt you hear things moving around you you get scared you can call it whatever you want you can call it adrenaline because there is adrenaline involved but i mean it's coming from fear because you you don't know like things have been smoothed up to this point, but what if? Those what ifs are always there. Yep. Yeah, I'll tell you one that happened down by the Blackfoot that I've never told anybody. And that was, you know, we had them actually sneaking into our camp, stealing food and stuff at night because we've been down there camping off and on for about three months. They're really used to us being there. And uh, I had my, it was middle of the summer, or actually it was later in the summer, and it was really hot. And I had the, uh, the fly on my tent unzipped. And we were set up in a thicket next to the river. And my uh, research buddy had his tent set up about 30 feet away over on the other side of the, the thicket. And then there was thickets all around that in every direction. And we had like little trails that we had made into each tent that connected up and then went down to the river from there. And uh, he had like a camp lamp sitting over in the cleared out area in front of his tent over there. And I remember I heard this rustling going on. It was like 2 o'clock in the morning. I was wondering what the hell he was doing. And I figured I'd get up and have a cigarette and, you know, kind of needed to go hit the latrine, so to speak. And so I crawled quietly out of the tent. And Now, keep in mind, I had the zipper on zip, so I didn't have to make any noise. And I was really quiet when I climbed out. I had cleared away all the leaf litter and everything from around the front of the tent, so there was no noise there. Oh, you're and a first sat, too, are you? Yeah, I sat in my little uh, camp chair there for a minute, and I was looking over at his tent. And all of a sudden, you know, I heard that same rustling again. And then uh, I heard another rustling, and there was this gigantic shadow that went past this big tree. Um, and for yeah, for a second, I just thought I had a heart attack. I went, oh, my God, you know, there's there's a freaking Bigfoot right there 30 feet away. 
there's this gigantic shadow going past this tree, and his little camp lamp is lighting it up. And then it just, like, as fast as I was scared, it went away, and I went, no, no. That was just him getting out of his tent, and it was the camp lamp throwing his shadow on that tree 20 feet away and making it look gigantic. So that was my Bigfoot. Which does happen, but... Yeah, and I could hear him rustling around over there and making noise. And then I heard his tent unzip. And he got out of the tent and walked past the camp lamp. And his little skinny shadow that was a third as tall or as wide and two or three feet shorter was cast on the tree. And I went, oh, my God, that was a friggin' Bigfoot. And it was just in camp. <laughs> just not and I me. never told him that because he... Uh, he actually had one come over and mess around, and uh, long story short, he ended up his tent got burned down because he was so freaked out, and he was done researching. But uh, this was like about two, three weeks before that happened. No, it was it was earlier than that. It must have been a couple months before that happened. But uh, yeah, you know, it was like he he was so interested in, be, in being involved in researching them and everything. But when it came, when he finally did see one, then that was it. He was done. He didn't want anything to do with it anymore. And, uh, you know, he didn't even realize he had him right over by his tent trying to swipe food and stuff like that. And I, I kept telling him that, and he didn't believe me. Yeah, and that's that's the thing. A lot of people will say, well, this is what I'd do if I was in there, and this is what I'd do if I was, if that happened to me. And this is what, you, you don't know what you would do when this, those things happen. Take my word for that. Mm-hmm. If you have to think that quick, and you don't you don't know how you're going to react. You can try and plan it out all you want. But when you are actually faced with a giant, you have to make split second decisions which are are not easy to make when you're when you're that overwhelmed. No. And the point I'm trying to make here is that we were looking for them. We knew they were in the area. I knew that they had even been in camp. One of them left his damn track right in front of my tent, nineteen inches. God. Mm-hmm. That was not fun to find first thing in the morning. And obviously left it there on purpose. It was like four inches from the the zipper on the tent, you know. And uh, that was the only place around there that was cleared off where you could have left the track that we would have obviously noticed. So that was on purpose. But, uh, you know, it, it was all sort of academic and I can still be skeptical, da 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 da, right up to the point where he saw it. And then he was so shocked he didn't want to even deal with it anymore and he was all done squatching. But, you know, here I am sitting out there and I see this big shadow go by the tree or anything. And am I thinking, where's my camera? I need to grab my camera. No, I'm just like stunned, even though I know they're around there. Mm-hmm. I'm still stunned. And it never occurred to me, where's my camera? I can get a picture while it was night. You know, what am I going to get a picture of a shadow on a tree? Now, there wouldn't have been enough light even probably to take a picture, but I could see that little sha- the huge shadow that his little camp lap was casting on that tree. You know, And I thought it was him until he got out of the tent and I realized it wasn't. But again, you know, you, you're expecting it. That's what you're down there for. You've got the equipment. And, you know, if in this case, if it had happened during the day, I probably still wouldn't have got a picture. I would have been so busy being freaked out. I wouldn't even thought, where's my camera? I need to grab it and get a picture. And that's the thing. If if you're someone that has sponsors and stuff like that, then you can go in with with the intent of being the one to prove this or prove that. But if you're out there for another purpose, if you're out there for yourself or – you know, and you share only share within a small group, and and things like that. It's you don't think about having all all the equipment. You've already you already know it. Once you yeah. know it, you know it. So it's for me. I'll share what I feel like sharing and uh, what I I think is worthy of being shared. But uh, I don't bother with with the. Uh, the high tech equipment. It's it was proven to me 21 years ago. So uh, it's I'll always say the same thing. Well, if I share my stuff, you are free to take it or leave it. It's not going to change a bit. It's not, it's not going to change anything that has happened for me. Yeah. So uh, I I just I don't bother with with the equipment if I get a chance, like you saw with Carl and and with the pictures from New Brunswick. If I get a chance, sure I'm I'm going to take a picture. Yeah. But, I'm not going in with a with a with a whole bunch of stuff that's is just extra weight to carry around, and it's gonna you're gonna get no results from it anyway. So uh, yeah, I agree. It, it's I just don't bother. 
No, it makes good sense to me. I mean, that's kind of the way I am with it, too, just bringing the light equipment, tape measure, camera. That's, you know, pretty much it, other than your camping gear. Yeah, I, I go as basic as, as basic and as light as I can, because, I mean, if I do have to haul my ass out of there in a hurry, I'm not I'm not carrying 200 pounds worth of stuff. Yeah. Okay. My back wouldn't handle it anyway. No. <laughs> no, no, I'm, uh, you know, as a lot of the listeners know, I'm pretty well disabled myself, so it isn't like I can go for long hikes carrying a heavy backpack or anything like that. I have to be smart squatcher and look at topo maps and figure out where they are before I even bother to go there and walk the shortest possible distance from the nearest road to get there. <laughs> so that's why I have uh, helpers with me because then I go, you know, that hillside looks interesting. You should go check it out. Okay. They walk up and check it out. Yeah, let's go. You grab that, you grab that, and I'll walk ahead. I'll lead. Yeah. I'll, su- I'll sit here and take pictures and listen. <laughs> Uh, no, I got some great guys that are working with me out here, and uh, you know, one of them actually just graduated from college with a degree in anthro and did his final paper on Bigfoot, which he got an A plus on. Really? Um, and he's the guy that got the accidental footage up at uh, Paddy Canyon, and just walking along with his arm out to his left, filming over the edge of the mountainside, and there was one standing right freaking there, and he got it on camera. <laughs> So, you know, uh, he's pretty happy with that too. He's like, well, I kind of always thought there could be, uh, you know, something like that out there. And, like now he's been going out there with me for a couple of years, and he's like accidentally filmed one apparently, and he's gotten lots of pictures of tracks that he's found and tree structures and snaps and all kinds of stuff. So you know, he's like, he's into it now. <laughs> but now he like knows that it's real, so he's a little bit more leery about going out there at night and stuff like that. That freaks him out a little bit more. What drives me crazy, and it happens to me all the time, is I'm going through my my pictures today to decide which ones I'll be. I'd be sending to you for for the show and that. And actually, I had started uh, a few days ago getting the other ones ready. So I'm going through my old pictures, and I jump on the computer, and I I find Nancy, and I tell her I have other pictures of him that I didn't know I had. Now, I don't know if if for a fact, because, like I said, I believe what I see. I don't know for a fact that they're pictures of him. But, I mean, there's times when I would go and I'd take the cell phone and hold it backwards over my shoulder and just keep clicking, and especially on my way in and on my way out. And it it looks like I've possibly been photobombed probably another ten times, and I had no idea right up until that day. That day was the first time I can honestly say yeah. that I saw him. It is not um, the first time he saw me. Yeah, well, and there's the thing. You've got something to compare it to now. You know what his face looks like, so you can start looking for that in all these other pictures. And then if they get to these in there. Basically what was happening, I was going through, it was like, okay, well, this one's got this one's got some tracks, and then this one's got uh, some more of the arches that he is absolutely crazy about doing. I gift, he makes an arch. I gift, he makes arches. I gift, he, <laughs> makes tree, he does tree bends. <laughs> Wait, he's going to get frustrated with requesting McDonald's, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> One of these days, he's going to get frustrated with me. He's going to come out and he's going to shake the hell out of me and say, "Aren't you catching on to what these things mean?" And uh, <laughs> yeah. no, like, sir, I'm not. Together, it's M for McDonald's. Where's my burger? <laughs> Speaking of McDonald's, I'm gonna, it's a funny story, and I have to tell you because it has nothing to do with my research, other than I know of a habituation site in. Ohio. And again, people do not do this, but there is a country singer whose niece lives in Ohio. And apparently, the habituation has been going on for four generations. Oh my now, God. This woman goes every day. She works, she, they own a, like a, a tavern. And she comes home from that tavern every day at lunch and brings home cheeseburgers. And gifts them every single day at noon on her on her lunch break, brings them cheeseburgers, and they've been they've been doing that since as far back as she can remember. <laughs> She's only a few years older than me. Oh my god! And I would say that if somebody told me that, I would say you were completely full of shit. But I've actually seen her stuff, and she's not kidding. I mean, this farm is 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 uh, you know one of the hottest spots that I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. So, um, 
but yeah, every day at her lunch hour, she comes home with McDonald's hamburgers, no Big Macs, just plain old hamburgers, the cheese cheeseburgers, and she brings them, lays them out, they come and get them, and off they go. <laughs> I don't know why, but that just cracks me up. <laughs> it does, I know. I <laughs> react to the same way. harking down burgers every day. <laughs> oh, it's burger time, yay! <laughs> But I mean, I've actually seen video of of an, the arm coming out, and and that they, they like she has long hair that's about halfway down her back, mm-hmm. and they they they'll reach out and they like to touch her hair. And other than that, they they've never harmed any of the family in in any way. But oh it's, hell no, they're not going to jeopardize the cheeseburger train. Yeah, they're no not going to order the burgers over that. No way. But I mean, when well, she told me that. Happy. When she told me that, I was thinking, okay, maybe she does this once in a while. But she was, no, I do this every day. This is what I do on my lunch break. I come home with cheeseburgers. <laughs> All right, you're you're feeding Bigfoot cheeseburgers, and you expect me to buy this. And then she starts showing me the evidence. <laughs> as crazy as this is, it's actually true. <laughs> Well, who can resist a cheeseburger? I mean, I can see why Bigfoot would like them. That's just so weird. How did they ever get him to actually eat one to start with and then decide they liked them and bring us more? Apparently, it started with her parents, but but uh, I, I I don't know how it got started, but it's a family tradition now. <laughs> it's a family tradition. <laughs> I mean, the Squatch is some cheeseburgers. Yeah. Don't forget to pick them up. God. And if she hears the show, she's going to be laughing her ass off. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Well, she should come on the show and show us her cheeseburger sasquatches if she's listening to the show. I want to see that. And you know what? What the shame about the whole thing is is that she would. I have no doubt that both her and her husband and her kids would love to do that. But because she is who she is, is and who she's related to, it. It's uh, when I when I think about this particular singer, it I'm not surprised that there's there's you know a Sasquatch story in the family at all because of where where this singer is from, mm-hmm. but for for it to be going on for four generations and the whole McDonald's cheeseburger thing, it just it blew my mind. But uh, she would uh, they would like nothing more than than to uh, than to do something like that, but. They're in a position where they absolutely cannot say a word. Yeah, you know, it's, you got to figure that if it's been going on for four generations, that it started out in the pre-McDonald's day. Yeah, and they've up, they've downgraded from regular burgers to McDonald's only. I don't know what the hell they were taking them in before the before the cheaper cheeseburgers came along, but <laughs> how how that ever got started, I I really don't know. But it it was interesting, and obviously <laughs> at first, I mean, it was right after I had done, I had done. Uh, Another show that will remain uh, unmentioned, the name, mm-hmm. but, um, and I thought that she was, you know, another, just a follower that wanted to tell me something to impress me and get my attention and all that, but, I mean, it turned out that her story checked out perfectly, and then the video and the and the pictures and that, I was, I was blown away. The, 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 the McDonald's cheeseburger Bigfoots are real. <laughs> I've seen goofier things in real life, man. I had a bearded dragon that liked McDonald's cheeseburgers for some reason. And, you know, generally they won't eat human food or anything, but every time I get a McDonald's cheeseburger, and she'd generally be running, sitting on my shoulder when I was running around somewhere, I'd go into McDonald's get a cheeseburger. And they'd be like, oh, you can't have her in here. Yeah. Well, I'm bringing her in to get her cheeseburger. No way. Prove it. Oh, well, give me a cheeseburger. And I'd take the cheeseburger and I'd hold it up to her and she'd take a big bite out of it. And then I'd go, oh, my God, i got to get a picture of this. You know? And she always liked to pull the pickle out and eat the pickle. But she would eat the bun and she would eat some of the meat, too. You know. But, I mean, so, uh, yeah. just just picture going in and ordering the amount of cheeseburgers that she would have to have to order and the look that she would get. Because I'll tell you, when we when I was younger, a bunch of us were, were uh, hanging out in Greenwood, actually, and buddy of mine just got off work at the mall and he was he was a he was a big dude and we went over to mcdonald's and he bought a couple cheeseburgers for us and 
five for himself. Now, he walked up and he ordered seven cheeseburgers, and they looked at him like he had three heads. Mm -hmm. So I can only imagine when she goes in there every single day and orders a shit ton of cheeseburgers, and she's maybe 115 pounds at the most. (laughs) Yeah, where are all these cheeseburgers going? Yeah. Well, what the hell are you doing with our cheeseburgers? <laughs> but no, it, that that is, I've heard some strange uh, tales, but the 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 strange but true ones are the funnest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes the most bizarre stories are actually the true ones. Yeah, I'm really sure. After a while. <laughs> oh my God. Well, what what else can you tell us about Carl while we're still on the topic of Carl here with this show? Is there anything else you can share with us as far as your interaction with him over the last four years that's kind of well, it, ordinary or, or is ordinary for Bigfoot? For whatever reason, like I said, once, once the gifting started, um, any problems on the main property stopped. I don't know why. I don't know what his purpose was that started the trouble in, in the beginning. Um, he seems very, very mild. He obviously wants to continue to interact, or he wouldn't be leaving me the things that he leaves me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I don't know. I think I mentioned to you about the the rock that was polished with some unknown yeah. substance with no smell. Um, but other than that, he just keeps doing these funky things with with the uh with the saplings and and the trees. I mean some of the tree breaks and twists are are, you know, very high up. Others are five, six feet at best. So it seems him, like there's a direct correlation every time you're up there gifting them, he makes new structures. It is, and uh, so I'm assuming that he's he's uh showing his his appreciation or he wants this interaction to continue, which, like I said, it will, as long as my health holds out. Um, but uh, he, he, he doesn't he doesn't seem aggressive in in any way. I mean, to stand that as close as what he was, he, it, it, uh, he, he doesn't seem aggressive in, in any way. Once the stuff stopped happening at the house, it was it was uh, basically a Kind of a boring story to tell, actually. When you when you, you, you go back, well, I bet you the, the homeowners are really happy that it's now a boring story. <laughs> because uh, I bet they they love the hell out of the fact that he managed to at least get them to quit knocking the wood pile over. And they're still the bit on. they they're still slack jawed every time I stop. If I stop in on my way out, or I mean, so there's sat- some Saturdays where, um, especially in the wintertime, where I'll just drive out and talk to them, and they're still slack jawed at everything that's gone on and how quiet everything has gotten and just by going back doing what I did. And and that was, it was new territory, new territory for me. And I was back there with a purpose and the purpose right. was to get him to leave them alone. And I had never been in the situation where I had, I had that purpose before right. it was to help, it was to help somebody else. Out. And I didn't know how to do it. I didn't know, um, you know, I, the, uh, I knew gifting and I knew tracking somewhat, but um, I didn't know. I, I I didn't know how if this was going to work, if this was going to help the mode, if it was going to make it worse. But I mean, it, what else do you try? I mean, there's yeah. not like a there's no one eight hundred number that you can call to. You know, I've got I've got a big something <laughs> scare the hell out of my family. Come out and take care of it for me. It, it, it doesn't work that way. And and knowing what to do about it doesn't work that way either. So yeah, yeah you can't just call on a uh, pest control orcan army or something, or or the trolling army or bigfoot in the army. <laughs> Say, hey, I got a problem with a pest here on my property. He's about uh, seven and a half feet tall, covered with hair. Can you come get rid of him? <laughs> well, another another quick funny story, and then I'm done. Is uh, we have a uh, an old retired ship here in 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 Bridgewater and with it got to a point where it had actually it it's docked there it's no more good uh, it needs to be taken out of there and it had tipped over and it sent a lot of wharf rats into town and on one of the days that I 
one of the mornings that I had come back from from uh, researching, and in that area, I at my place I had run into a guy that that said, um, "I don't know how your morning's been, but he said I shot twelve rats this morning." And I'm thinking, you lucky bastard. <laughs> All you I'm dealt with was rats. I'm in the woods, yeah. giants, and you shot a few rats. And you think you're having a bad day. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a good day. You got to exterminate a whole bunch of rats. Yeah. An excellent day. <laughs> but the, the, the two strange things, that, the, the last strange thing that happened that, that, uh, almost, and if it happened again, it would make me consider walking away again, was the day that I told you about where I was on my way out, and for some stupid reason, I stopped, and I turned around, and I said, yeah, I'll be back in a couple days. Now, nobody said anything to me. Mm-hmm. Nobody, um, I, I heard no voice ask me a question. I heard no there was nobody else there to ask me a question. He wasn't standing there to ask me the question. But yet I turned around and I answered the question with, yes, I'll be back in a couple of days. Now, why that happened, how it happened, I don't know. But I literally turned my head back around and just kind of, I'm sure I had a very puzzled look on my face, and then I started laughing. So if somebody had to come back on that trail and saw me standing there in the dead center of that trail, laughing my full head off at something like that that I just did. They thought I was, they would think I was as high as a kite. <laughs> because I literally was standing there. I was laughing so hard that I was holding on to my ribs. Because I was thinking, what the hell did I just do? I'm answering questions. I'm here I am, chasing giants, and now I'm answering questions that people aren't asking me. <laughs> Um, flipping okay, my... it's time for a vacation. <laughs> yeah, I'm flipping my lid. It's time uh, this rabbit hole shit. I don't want to go down no any more any more rabbit holes. I'm not going any further. I'm done. I'm out of here. This is crazy. And I don't know what happened. All I know is I I answered a question that I wasn't asked, and it freaked me out. It was mm-hmm. funny as hell at first, and it was it's funny as hell now. But during the time in the middle, it was like, okay, I can't take any more of this. This is getting too <laughs> far out of my old school mind to I can't yeah. handle this. Way outside the comfort zone now. <laughs> well, you know, like I've heard a couple other uh interactors tell me that apparently they they can project like an image a, uh, like a snapshot of something or an impression of something. They can't mind speak. Can't no, and it wasn't a, it wasn't mind speak. I never heard right. it anything. You, you, yeah, that's what they said too. They you don't hear like voices in your head or anything like that, you might get an impression of like, you know, a cheeseburger. <laughs> would be an example. So the ones that we were talking about a few minutes ago, you get an impression in your head of a cheeseburger. Oh, did, did I remember to feed them cheeseburgers today? Oh, damn, I didn't. You know? <laughs> Shit, man, I'm seeing cheeseburgers. They're hungry. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, just that sort of thing. And no, no conversations, just a general impression of something like that and apparently it's like even for people that are doing close interactions with them it's really rare and it seems to take them some degree of energy and so you know they have to have a really good reason to want to do something like that apparently in order for them to even do it so which which kind of makes sense because i mean it was it had been a little bit since i had since i had been in and like this was after i had I had moved to the city, and then I was back down. I was back down here in Bridgewater for a while, and then so I started, you know, going in here and there. I didn't get back into the whole, you know, going at it full time or anything like that again. It was just going in because I kind of felt an obligation to do it. And but I mean, here I am, standing in the middle of a path. <laughs> talking to people that aren't there. But no, there was no, I didn't hear the question. I didn't hear anything. Anything other than birds chirping and the regular noises that I would hear on my way out. But yet, like a fool, I'm standing there answering that question. And it still blows my mind as to why I stopped and did that. But um, I don't know. 
maybe there is something to it. Maybe there isn't. If there is, I don't want. I don't really want to know. I won't discount something that somebody else says because I don't. I don't. I'm not one to run down other people's research unless they're complete assholes and deserve it. But um, it just uh, again straight back to Nancy, and that's why I always thank Nancy because she keeps me. You know, she calms me down and says, "Okay, you're my partner. Shut up. Sit down." Calm down. So <laughs> just don't make a bigger yeah. deal out of this than what it is. And like I'm talking to people that aren't there. It's a big deal. Yeah. Well, well, when they start answering you back, then it's a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. We better wrap it up here before we run out of time. Um, wanna, yeah, we have a habit of doing that. Yeah. <laughs> this is the way it is with most of my guests because we have so much fun talking. We can just go for hours, but... Uh, time constraints don't allow for it. Um, but, you know, again, hey, big shout out to Nancy for doing such a great job with all things uh, all things Bigfoot Sasquatch related. That's it, right? Yep. And um, check it out on Facebook, you guys. And, uh, again, thanks for being on the show again, Leo, and I really hope that in the future you will keep us updated on what's going on with your research and interaction with Carl over there and whatever else might be going on over in the Nova Scotia area. Well, I will absolutely um, do that. All right, brother. I really appreciate you being on.